So if rates become unanchored from inflation, economic growth, or anything else, it says that there's a structural problem in the market. We know there's massive structural problems in the lending markets because there's too much debt. And if you lose control, the Federal Reserve can't allow loss of control. And don't forget, they're just being downgraded because of the shitty mess that the US is in because of its political impasses and everything else. Is If they lose control of the bond market, just that's the world's anchoring asset. It should not be allowed to happen. So in which case, they will come in and stop it. And we saw that in March of 2020. They did the same where rates got ridiculous on the other side going down. Just completely all liquidity dried up and the market broke. We have a risk that we could break the market again here. And in which case they will step in and say, we'll have to increase quantitative easing and buy bonds. But you could do it at a fixed price and say, you know, we'll buy all bonds at 4.25% or whatever the number is that they say, look, enough's enough. Will the U.S. economy face a recession in 2023? And what does this mean for Bitcoin? With investors continuing to warily eye the ever-changing economic situation, the way forward remains unclear. Will the U.S. experience a hard landing, a soft landing, or does the status quo persist? We look at the prospects for recession and assess Bitcoin's role in investor portfolios. Roa Wolpal gives us his view on the next Fed move and how it will impact the U.S. economy and the crypto market. So let's get started with the video. We know that the regional banks have problems with their bond positions. And if bond yields keep rising, they keep losing money. That makes them illiquid. And with high rates, there's money moving from deposit accounts in banks that are only paying half a percent and moving to money market funds that are paying 5%. So they're losing their deposits and they've got losses here. Every time you take a deposit out, you have to kind of unwind some of the trades, but they're all down. So there's a huge, massive mark-to-market loss that goes on. And they're having to borrow money from the Fed to fund that right now. So in this financing facility that the Fed set up. Also, if the bond market breaks, it means that there is not enough participation from the key participants, banks, asset managers, market makers, to keep market liquidity. So prices start gapping around, setting interest rates that, which were not the intention of the Federal Reserve. And if they're, if they're setting interest rates that were not the intention of the Federal Reserve in a very meaningful way, then it can create problems. So... It is very risky here, um, right. what happens to the bond market. So people need to keep an eye on it. The equity market might not like it either. Even the crypto markets may not like it if if yields go up because that puts pressure on everybody and their borrowing costs. Now, most mortgages in the United States are longer duration. But we've seen credit card financing rise. We've seen um, car leases rise. We've seen all forms of short-term financing rising, corporations rolling over debt, they've got short-term debt, that's going up. And the US government themselves need to fund their bloody debt, right? And they're rolling over all of this debt. And the last thing they want to do is try and roll out 10-year debt at 4.5% when the last time they were paying the interest on it, it was 1.5%. Suddenly you triple your interest payments and then you have to borrow more money to, to have the interest payments because the taxation rate's low. It's We've got some dangerous dynamics here, which is why they need to cut rates. At first principles, there's too much debt. And we can't manage it. And we don't have the money to pay for the interest, let alone actually pay off any of the debt. And that's the dirty truth. We don't have raise enough taxes because economic growth is trending lower over time due to demographics. So you don't have the, the money to pay the interest. You can't pay off the debt. So you're in this trap where you have that everything is about managing the debt. Right. And from 2008 onwards, the number of these ridiculous parts of the plumbing system that got invented to stop that bit broken and that bit broken, that bit broke because the whole bloody thing is broken and we're just trying to tape it up. Which is why in the end, I saw this coming back from 2008, 2012 is why I got into crypto. I got into crypto for this. You could see that the end game of the debt, and in fact, I've done some videos called the end game, make it 
impossible to deal with. Now, most people think there's a debt default. I don't think there is a debt default. I just think that the use of central bank balance sheet goes exponential, which increases the cost of assets, but nobody's wages go up. It's like a mutualization of these interest payments across the general population without raising taxes. It's the same thing. But it, and by the way, the decline in purchasing power, power, and by the way, the decline in purchasing power in the currency. Yeah. And that's a mutualization of losses amongst everybody. But rich people hold assets, so they're protected. The less well off have incomes. Their incomes don't go up as much as the assets, so they're poorer. So it's that's where we're getting this income disparity. Yeah. Wealth yeah. disparity and keeps increasing. And it, it's not going to stop for a while. And even at nation state level, is you borrow more money because you're not getting enough taxes because the economy is growing slowly because it's an aging population. So it's trend rate of GDP growth goes down. Right. So they're all in a trap and it all kicked off in 2008 when most of the developed world hit 100% of GDP in debt. And then we had a debt jubilee, which was essentially debt jubilees are normally you don't need to pay your debts back. The debt jubilee we got in 2008, it only recently made me realize what it was. It's like you don't need to pay the interest. We're going to make interest cost zero. And then after that, we're going to monetize all the interest by printing money. So you don't pay the interest so we can manage the system. But it has a lot of unintended consequences. So, you know, if if GDP growth is driven by the magic formula of population growth plus productivity growth plus debt growth, debt growth reaches limits in 2008. So basically all debt growth now is just interest payments. Um, they issue new bonds to pay the interest. Then you've got... Um, Demographics, which means that population growth over time slows down and in many countries goes negative. So then the only way of driving GDP higher, because your debt to GDP matters for that, the only way of doing it, because GDP is the is all of the income that pays the debt. So GDP growth pays the services, the debt interests. The only way is productivity. And the only way of doing that is technology. Bitcoin, BTC, was holding steady just below $30,000. The price stability is a positive sign, indicating consolidation around these levels that can potentially support another leg up, Joe DiPasquale, CEO of the crypto hedge fund Bitbull Capital, told Coindesk in an email on Sunday. DiPasquale said was still digesting last week's announcement by PayPal of its own new stablecoin linked to the US dollar. This is a major set forward since it's the first issuance of its kind by a traditional global payment service with hundreds of millions of users, DiPasquale said. We believe such developments are likely to shape the market behavior moving forward, even if the general response is relatively muted at this point. The United States securities regulator could completely U-turn its approach to crypto enforcement depending on a key election in the United States in 2024, according to former SEC official John Reed Stark. In an August 13th tweet, the former SEC Office of Internet Enforcement chief predicted that a Republican president could drastically shift the crypto regulatory tide, including the potential appointment of crypto-friendly commissioner Hester Pierce to replace Gary Gensler as the agency's chairman. There are currently a number of Republican candidates in the running. Former President Donald Trump remains the most popular candidate among Republican voters, followed in a distant second by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and then by South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. Should a Republican be elected as president, according to Stark, Gensler would likely be replaced by Pierce, often referred to as Crypto Mom. Stark noted Pierce's history of dissent and opposition to many of the regulators' crypto-related enforcement and explained that if Pierce were to become the head of the SEC, the world should expect that most U.S. SEC crypto-related enforcement and most crypto-related SEC disruption would grind to a screeching halt. Now crypto has become a far more divisive issue. Republican candidate Ron DeSantis said he plans to protect Bitcoin and vowed to ban central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, if elected president. Until such a time when a Republican sits in the Oval Office, Stark said it was unlikely that the regulator would become any more friendly towards crypto, predicting that the SEC will reject the current swath of spot Bitcoin ETFs for a range of compelling reasons. Despite a number of industry heavyweights from the world of traditional finance, such as BlackRock and Fidelity lodging applications for a spot Bitcoin ETF product, Stark believes the SEC will eventually reject all of the outstanding filings. So, what's your price prediction for Bitcoin at the end of 2023? 
Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.